My name is Dean Regas. I'm the Outreach Astronomer at the Cincinnati Observatory Center. I've been working here for a little over 13 years and it's an amazing place with uh, these old telescopes, these great old buildings. And my main job is uh, teaching people about the stars and outer space and also getting people to look through the telescopes. Oh yeah, there's a great history to the observatory. We've moved quite a few times. Well, I guess twice. Uh, the old telescope we have in the other building is the oldest telescope in the United States. It was made in 1843 in Munich, Germany. And uh, from there, it was shipped over to downtown Cincinnati. And our first observatory was on Mount Adams. If uh, Cincinnati residents would be familiar with uh, uh, where the monastery is today, that is where the observatory used to be. And then they moved away from downtown to get away from the pollution down to uh, down to the well I guess where we are today in the uh, wild wilderness of Mount Lookout uh, and Mount Lookout that it's been here the telescope has been here since 1873 uh, and in this building where we are right now this is where the old telescope used to be from 1873 to 1904 and then we got a brand new telescope in 1904 and we put that one in here and built another building and that's where the old telescope is now so it's been moved a few times we're open to the public on most Thursday and Friday nights and uh, you can come over and see the telescopes, how they work, and if it's clear then you get to view through the telescope. Uh, in the winter time we're going to be looking at uh, Jupiter all through winter and spring and then we're going to get Saturn up in the evening skies too and we'll be able to see that and that is dynamite. When you see Saturn in the telescope you can see the rings around the planet, you can see some of the moons, it's pretty gorgeous. Uh, so uh, when you come over you, you get kind of a tour of the buildings, you see how the scopes work. Uh, you always get a talk by one of our astronomers, uh, either our volunteers or our staff astronomers that have all this experience. And uh, it's a great place to go to ask your astronomy questions. I know some you watch stuff on TV, you read things about astronomy, and uh, we have lots of experts here that you can ask about it. Uh, and then just tour around the buildings. And uh, a lot of people, when they come here, they think, Wow I, I, wow, I didn't know this was even here. I've lived here my entire life and I have no idea this was here. Uh, so we want people to have that experience because it is pretty unique when you turn up the street onto Observatory Place and uh, you see this building at the end of the street. It's pretty incredible. Uh, well, I got started in astronomy by pretty much an accident. I, uh, I went to Xavier University and got my degree in history and secondary education. So I wanted to be a high school history teacher. And I did that for a little while, but then I kind of was looking for something else. Uh, something that was a little later at night, I think. Uh, teachers work so early in the morning, it's tough. Uh, so I worked for the Cincinnati Parks for a while and was working at a park called Burnett Woods near UC. And there was a planetarium there and my boss said, Dean, you're in charge. And I didn't know where anything was up in the sky, so I had to learn really quickly where all the stars and constellations were. And I, something, I, I can't explain it fully, but something happened under the dome. The stars started talking to me or something, but I fell in love with the subject and uh, uh, been star crazy ever since. And uh, so my expertise is really in identifying stars and constellations and the movement of the planets and, uh, and uh, the moon. and. Uh, uh, and that's mostly my expertise, what you can observe with the naked eye and uh, minimal, amount of, minimal amount of equipment. Well, I think for people that are just getting started, uh, number one, uh, you got to learn the night sky. I'd say don't get too crazy about equipment and buy the biggest, best telescope. Because uh, so often people buy that and then they think, oh, well, I can't really find anything. They look at the moon and then that's about all they can find. So we want you to learn the night sky first. Find where these hidden gems are, like nebulas and star clusters, and uh, you can then kind of progress up to binoculars. Using binoculars is very, very nice. I mean, you, I've really uh, liked using those more and more as time goes on, because it's easy to find stuff. They're very portable. Uh, and then you can work your way up to telescopes. And I don't know, there's no reason you have to invest you know, thousands of dollars in telescopes, especially, well, then my next advice would be come over here and use our very valuable priceless telescopes and you can save some money uh, and also get some great views. Yeah, 2013, we don't have any eclipses or any super gigantically rare things happening, but there are two potential comets that are coming by. Uh, one's going to be in mid-March, and its name is PanStars. Uh, it, we're not really too excited about that one. It's looking like it's kind of fading a little bit. Uh, but in November, this one is the one we at least want to put on our calendars. 
fingers crossed, this comet is named as Ison, I-S-O-N, and it could be very, very bright. Uh, if people remember like Hale Bop and Hayukataki from the 90s, it could be as bright as that, but we'll have to wait and find out in November. Uh, and then the other thing a lot of people have been noticing lately is when the moon is next to Jupiter up in the sky. Uh, we had that happen, it was right after Thanksgiving, we had another time where it happened uh, uh, on Christmas night, and then one in January. Uh, this is going to happen a few more times, uh, once in February, once in March, once in April, and once in May, where you can see the moon right next to the planet Jupiter. Uh, so that one's going to be really cool. Uh, and then the other one that's on my calendar is three planets that are going to be in this little triangle shape. Uh, it'll be Jupiter, Venus, and Mercury. Uh, and the best day to see that's going to be May 26th. So mark some calendars down. That should be some good stuff.